Well, hi everyone. This is Sony Artisan and Singray Ambassador Don Smith, and I would like to welcome you to the September tip of the month. And uh, we're just about ready to embark on a lot of workshops starting next week out in beautiful Jackson Hole with our Fall and Grand Teton workshop. And it's going to carry us right through all the way through till next March, uh, where we're going to stay very, very busy, but excited to finally get going. And uh, the countries we're traveling to, Scotland, uh, South America, where we're going to be in Patagonia region, uh, have all opened back up to us. And we're just finally encouraged to get back out and running these workshops again. But before I leave, I wanted to record this video for you and give you a couple of Photoshop tips that I know is going to help you out with your landscape photography in the processing realm. And what I want to start with today is uh, showing you how we can selectively build in contrast by painting it in. And then we're going to show you another image where I'm going to teach you how to remove those nasty halos that we can sometimes get along hard edges and skies in our photos. So as you can see, I'm in Photoshop here, and um, I have the TK Tony Kuiper version 8 panel up, and I love this panel. If you've been following my videos, you know I just work exclusively in this panel. It allows me to create masking, and if you're new to that term, it just allows me to isolate portions of the picture and apply my changes without it affecting the overall picture. So in this image, Let's start out. Uh, I'm going to do this assuming that you guys don't have the panel so I can show you the workaround on these and then I'm going to show you it with the panel and show you how much simpler it is. The panel, by the way, is $29.99, best investment of uh, $30 you're ever going to make in your life if you're very serious about your processing. And uh, I also highly encourage you to purchase the Sean Bagshaw videos that you'll see on Tony's site. There's Tony's URL there on the screen. Check it out and um, get involved in the world of masking. I, I think you guys are gonna love it. Okay, I'm gonna show you first of all, if uh, I, 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 I love this uh, beautiful old growth bristlecone pine. These trees can grow Oh, up to 4,000 years old. Um, they reside in the ancient bristlecone pine forest up in the White Mountains above the Owens Valley um, on the far eastern edge of California. They're actually the next mountain range to the east beyond the Sierra Nevada range. And if you've ever been over to the Bishop area, Lone Pine area in the Owens Valley, uh, if you're looking off to the east, you're looking, especially from Bishop, you're looking right up at where these old growth bristle cones grow. And there's two groves over there. First one you come to would be called the Shulman Grove. And then this one is uh, another 12 miles out, but on a very much graded dirt road where you probably won't want to be going over 20, 25 miles an hour. So it'll take you a little bit of a trek to get out there, 40, 45 minutes. And uh, but you'll be at what we call the Patriarch Grove, and it happens to be the favorite of my two groves. Um, they're both great. Check them out if you ever get a chance to get over there. All right, so let's start out here in the Layers dialog box. I'm just going to bring up a standard Curves, and I'll just go in and we'll pick a default increased contrast here. And when I do that, you can see the contrast is added to the entirety of the image. Now I can back down the opacity, but if I look up into this darker area of the tree, I don't really, um, I think it's just too dark up in there. And I really, I like, let me turn this on and off. And I want your eye to look at the root system. You can see there it's kind of flat. There it's got the beautiful contrast, but then the tree gets too dark and I just don't, uh, I don't like that. So I think there's a better way of going about this. And it's going to involve, if we come down to the bottom of our layer palette, we click on this, hover over this little square with a plus in it, it says create new layer. And this is what we call a blank pixel layer. You can see there's, it's not a duplicate of the background. It allows us to do some painting work into this that we can affect this picture. 
So um, what I want to do is I want to come here and where you see the color swatch over the white, and I'm going to double click. And over here where it says red, green, and blue, I want to change that to 128, 128, 128. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to get to middle gray. And uh, now you can see my swatch is gray. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is we're going to have to change the blend mode before we start painting on this image. And the blend mode we're going to want to go into here is called hard mix. And then lastly, over here on the fill, we're going to change the fill to 15%. So when we paint over, we build up the effect and not blast it all in one shot. Okay, so gray, hard mix, 15%. Now we're just going to type B to activate our brush key right there. And uh, I'm going to start painting over this, these roots. And I'm just going to stay kind of along the bottom. And you're going to see that the effect is going to build up slowly. And that's where that 15% fill comes in. So again, we're just not blasting through this. And it's just all to taste, however you want to do it. Uh, now, if you come over and you turn the little eyeball off, you see it's a little bit flat. And now we've, we're starting to bump in some beautiful contrast. Okay, let's add in another element to this. Let's create another layer. Now, this time I'm going to click, uh, well, let's cancel. I can just click right there on that little black swatch. I want to bring up my black over white. And if you were to open this up, you would see now it's 0, 0, 0 in red, green, and blue. And that would be black. All right, we have to come back over here and change this blend mode to hard mix. And we have to add in 15% here. Whoops, not 115%, <laughs> just 15%. And now when I paint, I am just affecting the blacks. And you can see the contrast is really just starting to pop just in the blacks. Now, I can also change that over and just affect the whites. Um, we would go back in and just flip this over here. And well, I'll show you. Let's just flip this over white over black. Let's add another one, another blank pixel layer. Let's change the hard mix. And let's change this down to 15 percent. <laughs> a lot of little moving parts here. And now you see it's just affecting the whites in that root system. Okay, so that's another way you can add contrast. And then the last way I want to show you, we're going to add another one. And uh, we're going to change this to hard mix. Once again, come over to fill, change this to 15%. And double click on this white swatch to bring up the color picker and move it in. And let's just pick up some beautiful color out of this root right here. I can even move that in a little bit more. And now when we paint, we're going to paint contrast, but we're doing it just with color. I'm just affecting the contrast of the color. Okay, so that's a pretty cool way of doing it. Let's just turn all of these off and turn them back on. And you can see... That's a great way to um, paint in contrast. Now, let me get rid of these, and I'm going to show you the beauty of the TK panel. This is just one of many, many things that are offered in this panel. Tony has already set up a paint contrast action for us. So I'm going to click on that. You can see the color defaults to the neutral gray, 128, 128, 128. You can see he already puts us in the hard mix. 15% and we can go right back painting. I'm going to kind of speed this up a little. Um, we can do another one here. Well, you know what? I don't even have to add that, do I? Because all I have to do is come back up, click on paint contrast. And um, I think this time I'm going to do it with the color. And I'm going to click OK. And I don't have to worry because hard mix and 15% were already set for me. Okay. Now, here's the cool thing. If I want to um, add another one, paint contrast, I'm going to click OK. But this time I'm going to paint with a black brush. 
that already flips this over for us. We're in hard mix, 15%. And now I'm just affecting nothing but the black tones. Okay. And let's do one more. Paint contrast. And this time I'm going to pick a white brush. And I'm just affecting the whites. Okay. The other cool thing is we can, we can select all of these layers. We can come up to this group icon with the white mask. So I'm going to click the right side. And it throws them all into a group uh, with a white mask. So I can take down the opacity, take it all the way off. I can bump it in to where, wherever I want it. I can reopen this. I can, uh, I would skip the step here and I would tell you to name all of these, such as uh, gray. I think this one was color and this was blacks and this was whites. And you could go back in and add and subtract from those. And um, it's very easy. So uh, that is painting contrast. Let's go on to the second tip here. This is an image out in the Alabama Hills. I want to grab my zoom tool here and come more right up. How many times, and I've really blown this up 200%, I can come up even more 300%, that uh, when you guys are adding, uh, I added a lot of clarity to this shot, um, especially on this, this granite here to bring it up, or you over sharpen or you over process in one way or the other, and you start to see this little halo line come up. Okay, well, what we're going to do is, this is a pretty simple fix. We're just going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate the layer here. If you were in the panel, you would click on that icon right there. Then I'm going to type S to bring up my clone stamp tool. And I'm going to utilize the left and right bracket key. And I just want to bring this oh, slightly bigger than the area that I want to clone. And then I'm just going to sample right above where I want to clone. Now, oh, one important part I have to tell you. This is where the blend mode comes in again. And we need to um, take this to darker color. And what this is going to do now is it's going to allow me to clone from here and paint. And it's not going to spill over into the darker color of the granite. Let's Let's find another area here, right in here, can use some cloning. And once again, you can see I'm being kind of sloppy with that brush, um, but it's not, it's, it's not spilling over into the rock. And here I would have to, this is a bigger halo, so I'd have to increase my brush a little bit. And voila. And that's, that's how you do it. Let's turn this off, turn it back on, and it's pretty simple. Now, the question comes up, can I go from dark to light? Yes, I can. All I have to do is come down from darker color. I would get another, um, well, I don't want to change these, but I'll just show you. I would come down to lighter color right there. And, but I would be on a neck, uh, another layer, I would start, and I could just go reverse. I could clone from the dark and go out into the light, and uh, it would fill in with the rock along that halo line, the foreground rock, not these background compressed rocks. Okay, so that's uh, pretty simple. Two tips that I hope uh, you can add to your arsenal and um, you know, help you out the next time you run into either a haloing problem or a selective contrasting issue. And you guys now know the tips on how to go about uh, fixing those issues. So um, until next month, uh, I'm going to get on the road here pretty quickly. Uh, this is Don Smith. I'm wishing you guys great images and great light. You all take care. We'll talk to you next month.